William Gallas was one yesterday saying that he's the forget Neymar, forget Mbappe. Juranovic has been the best player of the tournament for him. I mean, first, I mean, is that a bit over the top? And secondly, is, should Celtic cash in now while his stock's so high? Well, I think it's a wee bit over the top in fairness. I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a smashing tournament. As the best in the tournament, I, I, I don't know about that. I think Mbappe and well, Messi's get what five goals and three assists. I think there's a few ahead of him on that list. Um, had a stormer against Brazil, right enough. Um, I, I think it's inevitable the Celtic going to cash in now, um, perhaps even in January. <coughs> Excuse me. Especially they signed Alistair Johnson as well, and, and Tony Ralston who's still there and, and more than capable of playing week in week out. So I think if, if he is hot and he is looking for a move, me, he's what is he twenty seven now as well. Maybe a chance for him to make a big move and, and earn a few quid and earn a club a few quid as well. It, it just seems to be that the, the pieces are all in place now um, for January. Uh, I don't think anyone would, would grudge it. Um, he has a, he's had a great World Cup, uh, but I think he's a good player anyway. I don't think it's just a kind of a kind of by chance. He's just a, this came, it's not really came out of nowhere. He's a good player, and I think he will he will he will he will go on and, and do well wherever he ends up. Um, so yeah, I, in terms of what they get for him. I, I I don't think Celtic would get the kind of like twenty thirty million um, pound. I don't think so. Maybe because his age and all that stuff. And I, I, I don't know. Um, I think that's a bit unlikely. Uh, I can understand why people would say why not. I mean, he's a World Cup semi finalist and all that stuff. Um, I get that, but I, I still think that, that would be if they can get if they get ten million pound or above. I think they're doing good business. For a fullback that they signed what last summer, the summer before last, sorry, I think that'd be great business, um, and I think they should get that as well, because um, the World Cup does put a premium on them. I think there's no doubt about it. Um, but if they can get twelve million pound for them, that's some bit of business for a guy signed for two and a half million quid, and he did well for the club. I think that'd be good, a good bit of business. No. Um, if they can get more than that, if they get up towards twenty, then then fair play. Um, but I don't think there's any hurry. I think you should sit tight and see what, what comes in. Um, it's not even it's not even January yet, so I don't think they should jump at the first bid because um, you might find there's a there's a few a few clubs interested because it's um he's a very modern fullback. He can play a variety of positions, uh, very versatile. If he plays that fullback role, he can overlap, he can underlap, he can play inverted as the, as the modern way he seems to like. He plays a lot of the country that way as well, um, so he has got all that all the attributes um, that, that clubs would be looking for. So yeah, I mean, Celtic should, should sit tight. And hopefully there's some kind of bidding war for him, and that pushes up the fee even further. Graham, what do you see his value being? Um, I agree with Mick in the sense, I mean, a top, top tierney money is probably not realistic, just for varying factors. Um, but I, th- I think look, the point there at the end, Mick said, he's a very modern fullback. That really rings true, and that's what he is. And scouting as well, we talked about, I'm not, saying, I'm not trying to decry scouts here, but. Sometimes it is pretty simple what you're looking for in the mod, like a type of player. So he has played multiple different formations. He's very good at tracking back, decent pace, and he likes to run with the ball. So that's appealing. Every big club in the world know they can't spend 40, 50, 60 million in every position. Juranovic battle tested with a good Croatia team over the last two or three years. Champions League experience with Celtic. It seems a kind of tailor made signing, and that kind of fits into that. 12, 15, 12 to 15 bracket for me. Still got a long time left in his contract. Um, I, he just looks like the type of player. Do you know what kind of player he is? He's the type of player you'd be watching in the pub. Say he played for, let's pick another league that's kind of similar to say he played for Genk or Bruges or a team like that. And you go, oh, I wish, wish my team had a player like that. That's the type of guy he is. He's a, a very capable right back that's obviously destined to play in a higher league. Um, and that's, that's good for Celtic. And obviously, and Postacoglu spoke at the AGM about bracing supporters for big players leaving, and this is what it means. This is it: getting guys in two, two and a half million, developing them, playing well, selling on, and um, with the added kind of caveat that Alistair Johnson, who I, I thought he was really good, I've got to be honest, I'm really impressed with him at the World Cup, uh, comes in straight after. So I think that kind of price bracket for me is where, uh, and I, I think Celtic will know that know the value as well. I think they'll know the kind of market the team shopping. So. I think that became a good business for all. 